Alright, Assalamu alaikum everyone. Uh, today I wanted to change my topic. Your schedule lied to you because uh, it just wasn't meant to be, you know. Passing the message next time, inshallah. This time it's freedom of speech and I'm picking this topic. Uh, it's, something, it's something I've known in research for a while and I wanted to just, I, I put this together to share what is, in my opinion, a very, very critical um, thing to talk about. And it's because... Like, why am I talking about freedom of speech? It's because I personally have heard, and others, I assure you, you've heard, um, heard people invoke this, this grandiose ideal of freedom of speech to justify certain actions that go against the Quran, like very clearly go against the Quran. Um, namely, uh, we're talking about tolerance, or levels of tolerance, like near unconditional tolerance. And I have a quote here, it says, evil preaches tolerance until it is dominant. Then it, sil it tries to silence the good. Okay, so we have multiple things in the Quran that talks about tolerance as well, okay, in multiple contexts. Namely, uh, 825 says, Beware the retribution, they may not be limited to the evildoers among you. You should know that God's retribution is severe. And we know that as an example, the footnote says, A community that tolerates homosexuality, for example, may be hit by an earthquake. Okay, so this is... We're talking here about tolerance and what tolerance means. There are, there, are, there are other types of tolerance in the Quran. I don't want to look like I'm cherry picking. I know we have to tolerate certain things, certain people's maybe behaviors. Maybe somebody has a temper problem, but they're trying. They're doing certain things. However, we don't tolerate disbelief, especially, especially outright proclaimed or uh, some kind of disbelief that a person's defending, regardless of how many reminders you give them, regardless of how many debates you've had with them, if they're stuck in their disbelief, okay? So I have a quick audio. Uh, is an audio. It's a quick part of an audio. It's uh, audio number 49 on Solomon's thing. It is, it's Surah 60, 60 to 61. And right in the, uh, it's like something about certainty and something like that. If you look it up, that's usually how it's titled. And, it, and they're right at 5 minutes and 45 seconds exactly. The messenger, the messenger of the covenant is going back and forth with somebody. And he says, and he said, no, like, no, you don't. You don't, uh, gosh, I was just listening to it. But if the, the other person is asking him, like, what if they need help? Should, should I help them? He says, no. Like, if, if the person says that they're a disbeliever, if they declare themselves a disbeliever, an unbeliever, right? He says, you don't, you don't help them. He, he's, the, he's asking, like, it's a simple question. Like, I have a flat tire on the side of the road. You pull over and you're like, oh, right. I know this is an enemy of God. I'm pulling out of here. Like, I'm not going to help this guy change his tires. So there's no problem, you talk to them, you play around, joke with them, exactly. religion aside. Exactly. Yeah, verses 8 and 9 are really uh, are the rule that covers the, the umbrella rule. Can we do uh, good to them? Give an opportunity. If they're, still, if they're still neutral, yes. Especially if it's going to help them. No, but they declare themselves. Yeah. They declare themselves that they are non believers. Can we do good to them? No, you better run away from them. <laughs> <laughs> if they declare themselves as unbelievers, you well, better... They need help. If not, if one kind or the other. Yeah. Help. Yeah. Some kind. Shall we help them? Not if they declare themselves as unbelievers. They're enemies they of have, God. They yes. Have, yeah. yes, you have to run, run away from them. You don't help don't them. Help them. No. This is what, uh, let's read it again. Number nine, that enjoins you from befriending those who fight you because of religion. Evict you from your homes and band together with others to banish you. Better yet, if you look at verse number one, it says, Oh, you who believe, you shall not befriend my enemies and your enemies. So a person who declared himself as an unbeliever is an enemy of God. He chose the opposite side. Okay, that's, re that's really the part I wanted to play. It's very clear. You just listen to the whole thing in context. I, I promise you I'm not taking this out of context. Um, it's, it is within, well within context that you do not help people who are enemies of God. People, especially in this scenario, he says declare themselves unbelievers. But there's other people who are enemies of God that don't ought to come out and declare themselves as unbelievers. Right? So then inevitably, when you, conflict, when you talk about this topic of freedom of speech and you say, uh, and we're here, we're here uh, the, the, the next part I'm going to be talking about people who are, 
may or may not be allowed to come to a conference or may and may not be allowed to speak. And that's what I really want to address here is that if, if uh, okay, I won't name names. But I'll just go with if an enemy, like a very well-known enemy comes to a conference that says, I want to speak. And you know what I'm going to tell them? No. And you know what everybody else that I know is that believes in me is going to tell them? No. They're going to say, no, like we don't want you to speak. I'm not going to give you a platform. Then these people inevitably say, but my freedom of speech, I have my freedom of speech. How dare you deny me my humanity? There's some ridiculous such nonsense, okay? Um, I'll give you a scenario. This, this, this scenario I've heard almost verbatim. The person says, you're telling me your belief, forcefully, okay, is oppression. You're taking my freedom of speech away. You're victimizing me. I am a victim, okay? <laughs> I'm a victim. There are victims afoot, okay? And then the next part, which is my favorite, can be best described as wah, wah, wah. That's, that's what I hear. Uh, cry baby, right? So that's, that's what this is. Uh, that, that's, that's what I hear. So, there's a, so, now, so now I'm going to, God willing, put this freedom of speech in context. Freedom of speech is a function at the level of government, okay? It's a government level function as a basic human right. But, and, and this is a slight side note, but it is not, it is not something the US government gives you or any other government gives you. It is God that gives you your freedom of speech. Okay, let's be extremely clear about this. God dictates that you must have freedom of speech at a level where you cannot be oppressed, which is the government level. Okay, so in these United States, the people via the constitution actually prevent the government from limiting your free speech. Okay, so the government can't tell you, you can't organize, you can't have a conference about submission. Right, this is unlike other countries, uh, many of us are here from Iran, where the government does tell you, you can't, have, you can't have certain things. You cannot have certain beliefs or we will jail you. We'll oppress you, whatever we can, we'll stop you, okay? So, the, so these are the reasons for freedom of speech there. Yeah, okay, I shortened it. At the government level, okay? You can't have a free society. <laughs> you can't have a free society without it, freedom of speech. It's impossible. Uh, you must have freedom of speech. People who are squelched, meaning silenced, right? or eventually rebel. That you have to have, people have to be able to express what they have without fear of oppression. We're not talking about, again, oh, like you're right, I'm, I'm right, you're wrong, and then, oh, help, help, I'm being repressed. You know, that's, that's, not, that's not the, that's not the uh, a, a thing here. So speech is just speech. At the end of the day, no matter what you say, uh, if you suppress speech, people eventually generally become violent. There's some kind of revolution, something happens, okay? And this next part, don't crucify me just yet. Uh, but it says, even distasteful, nasty, and even blasphemous speech, the government, specifically the government, should not punish you, okay? And this is, and I'll, I'll explain why. Pe some people may have a problem with this, but I, this is absolutely true. Uh, because because this, any of this leads to oppression, okay? Because th there may come a point, let's say submission prevails, submission's dominant, but there may come a point and the government gets corrupt. Then what if, what if they say, uh, we're going to impose our beliefs? Then the believers who are in the minority are wrong, okay? And I'll explain why this is true. And my beautiful, beautiful Monty Python skit won't play, but you know, that's okay. It's only 17 seconds. So the system, instead, who, who should tell you, right? God's system is that the people, the communities should tell you what you should or should not say. The community should, in, in, a, in a way, I'll use this word lightly, police each other. In a way, you should say, uh, communities people are not bound by limitations of the government, meaning freedom of speech. And we are responsible for upholding the standards of morality, guys. I'll nail, I'll, I'll repeat this multiple times, God willing. You, me, the bumblebee, you know, we're, we're, we're responsible. We have to say, you know what, that is a blasphemy. You are, you are speaking against God. You are an enemy if you uphold this belief and you preach it, okay? We uphold the standards. Even in a submitter society, in a submitter government, okay? It is the government that allows you to have your absolute freedom of speech. And it is the people who say, you are full of nonsense. I will not let you open a liquor store on my property. I will not let you, uh, I will not give you a platform to spread your silly, blasphemous, nasty beliefs, okay? It is our duty. And the government can't stop us from stopping them from speaking, and the government can't stop them from speaking out about their stupid beliefs either, okay? Let's get this, 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 this needs to be abundantly clear to anybody. So what does this mean? Uh, first of all, yeah, so therefore it has nothing to do with private entities, I was nailing this home, as private entities, that's us, as, as, a, as an organization, from stopping each other from speaking, for instance, at a, at a conference. That's right. Yes. <laughs> that's right. 
this this organization can stop me from speaking. If 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 everybody stood up and said, get off, right? Like I don't I don't have a choice. This isn't this isn't a right, right? People treat this as as an inalienable right, right? People hear this freedom of speech as an inalienable right. Like I have a right to speak. No, you have a in, in the government won't stop you, but here it is your privilege to speak, right? It is not your right to speak. Nobody here has to bow down to your beliefs and say, yeah, just take the podium. Sorry, like oh, I'm powerless. That's not the trick case. Okay, but there are, and then there's, I'm gonna go over potential reasons you could stop somebody, it, hypothetically, or there are potential reasons you may not stop somebody from speaking. This is left up to us, it's left up to our discretion, okay? Maybe the person's an enemy of God. Why provide him with a platform? Stop him from speaking. They're promoting falsehood. They're fighting the believers. They're siding with disbelievers instead of believers. Maybe, like, this is up, left up to us. This is all a judgment call, okay? Right? Maybe, maybe they do this once and you're like, eh, you know, maybe the person's confused. Let's enlighten them. A few years pass, they keep doing it. Maybe you say, that's it, right? You're, you're not welcome to speak. Maybe you're not even welcome to come, okay? Any and all Quranic reasons apply here, okay? Reasons maybe you don't want to stop people from speaking. You maybe want to have an open debate. The person is promoting this and they've been promoting this for like, let's say, five years. But then they say, you know what? Okay, I, I, I sort of had a change of heart. I want to come talk. I want to come talk, I want to understand what's going on. Okay, maybe you say, all right, sit down, we'll have a Quran study. I'm still not going to give you a platform to speak, but you know what, let's sit down and talk. Let's all hundred, well, however many of us talk. Uh, you know, you give people who made up, haven't made up their minds, you give them the benefit of doubt, you let them speak. You know, generally giving the people the benefit of the doubt, I'll just put that there. Now, you're not required again to provide a platform for anyone at any time without oversight or supervision. This is not... This is our charge, in a, in, in a way. We have to uphold the standards of morality, remember. You can't, you, don't, uh, you should never sit there and think, oh, somebody else has to. No, it's, it's you. The Quran says it's your duty. Malkan, you clicked away. Ah. Oh, okay, fine. Everything is a time and place and it's left up to us. I went over this. Why is it, maybe it died, finally, no, after being on all day. Uh, private entities, businesses, nonprofits can all practice as they choose. Can platform you or no platform you, okay? Again, again, up very, very clearly. You can no platform anybody you choose to for whatever reason. This is within your rights. You may be wrong for doing it. Maybe you did it for the wrong reason. That's possible. Then you have a discussion. You did it for the right reason. That's also fine. No one, nobody is entitled, guys. Nobody's entitled. This conference, any other conference, nobody's entitled to a platform. Okay, but now there's, there's some other important issues to address here. What not to do. This is an important uh, part so we can nail this home. What not to do when you're organizing a, a conference and choosing who, who should or should not speak or attend. Shadow banning. But what is shadow banning? <laughs> Stealth banning, also known as shadow banning, ghost banning, comment ghosting is the act of blocking a user, usually in an online community, such that the user does not realize that they have been banned, okay? And this can happen, thank you, Maka. This can happen whether, it, it can apply to real life. If like, you submit and then we come back to you and say, no, you don't have a slot, okay? And then we don't tell you why. Or maybe we don't even tell you that you don't have a slot. You just come here and then like, oh, I'm not on the schedule, okay? This happens like three years in a row and then you're like, what the heck is going on? Well, you've been shadow banned, okay? That's what happened. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, well, what's, so what's the problem with, what's the problem with shadow banning? Because it's beating around the bush, yeah. But what is beating around the bush? We have to define this too. <laughs> what is beating around the bush? God says in 2.189, if I ask you about the phase of the moon, say, they provide a timing device for the people and determine the time of Hajj. It is not righteous to beat around the bush. Okay? Righteousness is attained by upholding the commandment and by being straightforward. Right? You shall observe God that you may succeed. So this is, it's not being straightforward. And last thing is, oh wait, uh, we'll go back. Yeah, so if you're shadow banning people, you're not being straightforward. Right? If you don't want somebody to speak, just have the gall to say it. Right? We, we, as an organization, we have the right. Yo, you are not speaking. I'll, I'll put the words in writing, like I'll, we'll paint the sky with it, you know, if you, if you want. We'll, we'll tell you, you're not, you're not going to speak here and here's why. If you can't do this, right, perhaps you should reflect on why, you, why you're not letting this person speak. If, it, if it's such a hard decision, or maybe, nah, that's not the right thing to say. If it's such a, 
difficult decision like, oh, should this person speak? Should they not? Maybe it's not time yet to ban them. Or if you, if you can't come out and proclaim it and stand behind it, back it up with the verses, back it up with the Quran, you have, maybe you have no business sh- banning this person from speaking. Just don't, don't shadow ban and don't beat around the bush. Last thing, what not to do, is don't tell people to not judge, okay? We know this, but this is especially bad. Like, you're, without your judgments, you're blind, okay, guys? You're absolutely left blind, okay, without your judgments. We know this is a satanic principle, but it's also an extremely hypocritical one, if you didn't know. Because, if I tell you, don't judge. Right? I just made a judgment. I just said, my judgment is that you shouldn't judge. Except, except the, the, uh, the, hypocr- the hypocrisy is thick and obvious, right? It's like, no, 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 it's, 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 it's my judgment that you shouldn't judge. And if you tell me that, I can, that you can judge, that I judge you guilty. Right? That's, that's, that's basically what this is. That's what this is. That's what that is. And um, I'm pretty sure I have a slide that says, but what is judging? <laughs> uh, I did. Uh, I just gave this, dissect, discern, discriminate, okay? You, you dissect the issue, issue, you discern the principles, and then you discriminate. Meaning, this isn't like, like, you know, like discriminate based on gender or something. It's discriminate. Like, you say, this is right, this is wrong. You take the issue, you, you tear it to pieces, you apply the Quran, and then you say, this is right, this is wrong. This is right, this is wrong. Over and over and over. Okay? That, that is judging, and you should do it all the time, contrary to popular opinion. In the... So here's a, here's a proclamation, right? Never drop your judgments, nor dull your senses, okay? This is, sat- this is what Satan wants you to do. Satan wants you to be asleep while you're awake. Satan wants you to die while you're alive, okay? You know the wages of sin is death. He doesn't, he doesn't want you to use your mind. He doesn't want you to do this. He says, 2378 says, He is the one who grants you to the hearing, the eyesight, and the brains. Rarely are you appreciative. Rarely are you appreciative. This is what God tells us. We have to, we have to use our senses. 4105 says, We sent down to you the scripture truthfully in order to judge among, eh, judge among the people in accordance with what God has shown you. Judge among the people. Okay, Judge among the people. It cannot be any more clear than this. Judge among the people. Judge right now. <laughs> You shall not side with the betrayers. You shall not side with the betrayers. Okay? And to end, I have one of my absolute favorite quotes of all time. Uh, Oh, wait. No, not yet. Not yet. Sorry. Not yet. (laughs) Not yet. Remember, God says 5156. Well, this is also an absolute favorite quote of all mine. He says, I did not create the jinns and the humans except to worship me alone. That's what God says. You're not here to please anybody. You're not here to give somebody a platform. You know, people's freedom of speech doesn't... Like, you're, you're not the one to uphold that, guys. You're the one to say, what is truth? I'm going to uphold the truth. I'll let the government not oppress me, you know? We don't, have, we don't even have to worry about that in this country. That's the beauty of it. Just leave it alone. It, like, you should never, if you ever have to cite a reason for you, like, you, why you should be allowed to speak, freedom of speech is not your reason, okay? That's, that is not your reason why you should be allowed to speak, okay? Unless you're, unless you're debating with the local government stopping you from rallying for a uh, community religious event or something like that, okay? Don't when you're talking to another private entity, okay? Judge and decide correctly. And here's one of my favorite quotes. It says, in hell, there is democracy, and in heaven, there is a kingdom. Kingdom of God, guys. Let's enter God's kingdom, mashallah. Okay, so um, I'm going to start off. There's actually a question on the YouTube, so I'm going to ask it. Yeah, please. Uh, they said, unbelievers, what about your boss at your job? Uh, said, so this is the question? Yeah. Should you... <laughs> what? What's the question? Okay. It says, unbelievers, unbelievers, what about your boss at your job? Oh, if, if they tell you that you should help them? No, no, no. So if you listen to the context, please, I urge everybody to listen. It's, it's Surah 6061. It's like something with certainty. Just listen. Go to the first five minutes. Start at five minutes and listen to it. Uh, God willing, the context will be abundantly clear to you. He's talking about p- enemies of God. Okay? He's not just talking about any random uh, disbeliever that you don't help them. No. It, 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 just listen to the full context. For the sake of time, I could not play the full context. That's my answer. So uh, Ashkan is first because he texted me in the middle. <laughs> Mashallah, awesome speech, bro. Loved it. Um, there was uh, in one of the slides you wrote um, 
you can side with the disbelievers even though your belief can possibly align with the truth. Oh, and and I think that's yeah, that's, that's that, not that was a contradiction because every time you start with the disbelievers, your belief will align with falsehood. That's uh, a fact. Yeah, can, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, go ahead. So please. I just wanted to point that out. Much yeah, love. awesome speech though. Love. Uh, just 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 to respond, that I, uh, I did not. Uh, I mean, I know that's what the slide said, but if you read the the sub the, the title, it's talking about reasons you may or may not uh, judge somebody to, to to speak or not to speak. Okay, so it's it's like if if you are uh, allying yourself with disbelievers instead of believers, I'm not advocating you to do that. Don't do that. God says not not to do that. Okay, that's that was the thing. Thank you though. So right here. Oh, watch out. Good speech. I have a question. Uh, it, it might be you may answer and you may not. Um, over the years, I've seen a uh, drastic change in, in your understanding and from uh, where you were from a couple of years ago to now. Uh, I would just like to see um, what triggered this change in you to um, go from being uh, neutral to uh, making a, a firm stance. Well, one, because, Arash, thank you. you, you you repeat it. I cannot tell you. I, I, there was a time, actually, I'll tell you now in front of everybody. There was a time where I, I pulled up a note on my phone and I started the number of times you were saying, Let's make a firm stand. I'm not joking. That was a thing. Uh, uh, I, I, and you know, but, but it's a reminder that I needed to hear. It took me many years, like you said, to go from probably too, too diplomatic to, uh, to making a firm stand. Uh, and if I, if I earned any sin there, that's mine and I, have to, I, I repent for that. The biggest change, I would say, with what happened to me going from that to making a firm stand is knowledge, okay? And I, and I encourage anybody who's on the fence of any issue between any community that there's a lot of knowledge out there. And again, this is why I say judge, judge, judge. Judge and discern. So the more my knowledge grew and the more I applied to Quran, I, I found that I, I can't be neutral. Uh, when, when I, so anybody who's out there who's neutral, study your history, history of submitters, what happened between people, study your Quran, and God willing, you'll come to the correct decision. Is that all? Yeah. I was just reminded by my good friend Ali here that uh, this is a privilege to speak, so I won't say what I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go to my backup. Um, how do you, and I, Awesome job. I believe exactly the way you do things. Um, what do you say to people that say the verse about uh, we sent down the Quran to jug, judge among the people? They use this, they distort that mm. very clear point and they say, no, no, that's for a third party individual to judge among the disputes of two individuals, not to judge the actions of someone directly. How would you uh, combat that? Every time I hear one of these arguments, I think of uh, God telling us that the human being is the most argumentative creature. That's 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 what I think of. Number one, um, over over the over the years, I, I I'd say I, I think people, you know, it, it's, sometimes we'll say you you know you're either with God or with Satan, right? And we may, and this is true. This is absolutely true. But you know, a, any proclamation like that, I've heard people some come up with like this absurd third thing, and they argue till the death for it. So the people who say that. First of all, they haven't understood the entirety of the Quran. I would say that. that when they say, oh, judge among the third party. Which third party is reading the Quran to judge between two believers? Who's, who's that? Who's that person? Show it to me. You know? Maybe there's five on earth somewhere. Uh, you know? <laughs> Who knows? Uh, God says judge among the people. Okay? Judge among the people. Who are the people? Just the third parties? Just the believers? Just the disbelievers? No. God says judge among the people. Let's not, let's not abrogate God's words. God says judge among the people, doesn't say judge among X group of people or Y group of people. Judge among the people. That's, that'd be my answer. Salam alaikum, over here. Just, you had the list of discern, um, all those lists yeah. about judge. Is distinguish not on that list for a reason? Uh, no, it's just three things that I came up with. And okay. I put it up there. And then could you go back to the first part of um, the, the whole... Can you click that back that first that? page, I really appreciated it because that was a pretty profound. Um, the the which which one? The quote about evil and how it dominates. Could you oh, elaborate yeah, yeah. on that sure. a little bit? I, that was pretty moving. 
Wow, it's like, it takes a while, huh? Oh, you got it? I was almost there, but... Ah. Yeah, this. So, this is, this is actually not just a symptom uh, between believers. This is a symptom of our society these days, is that we preach this sort of near unconditional tolerance. And I say near because people are... Let me tell you, when somebody tells you that you need to be tolerant, they are probably one of the most intolerant people on earth, okay? Let me make this extremely clear to anybody who's listening and anybody who's here. People who tell you to not judge will immediately drop you like, like a dead weight as soon as, you, as soon as you disagree with something that they don't, they don't agree with, okay? If, uh, these, people, these people exist not just within this community of uh, submitters. They also exist within the world. If you say that they're the most tolerant, liberal, nice people, and then you say, ah, I don't like, I, I think homosexuality is a sin, they will leave you in an instant, okay? What we are is we are truthful. We are intolerant, okay? We are intolerant of specific things, specific things, like things that God tells us not to be tolerant of, and we are forward and uh, straightforward and upfront about it. That's the difference between uh, us and the people. So uh, that's, that's why this quote is here, if that answers your question. Oh. Sure. So, um, uh, how have they ever said, mentioned anything that, how do they come to the conclusion, reconcile the fact that God says, um, don't ally yourself, the believers never ally themselves with disbelievers instead of the believers, if they do so, they're exiled from God, or the verse that you put up there where mm. um, God says that do not side with the betrayers. Mm -hmm. So how, uh, and many times we hear from them that we're the hypocrites and we're the disbelievers and all that. So how do they reconcile not judging with observing these commandments of God? And well, what other method do you know uh, if they use a different method to to figure out that we are we are hypocrites, for instance, or that mm. who's, a, who's a disbeliever so that they won't be able to ally themselves with them. Do they use a different method or? <laughs> yeah, I mean, the short answer is no, they don't. They, they judge too. It's just, again, as, as I was answering uh, j just a moment ago, like these people, they're necessarily hypocritical. The, st the statement, don't judge, is impossible. It is, is literally, it contradicts itself as it comes out of your mouth. So it, it's literally impossible, and that's the short answer. For that, Masha, I'll keep it short. Uh, so I can, uh, this is my second conference, and the first time I went to a conference was in 2007. And I never went back because people from my community will boycott from speaking. So how mm. do you recommend us to learn from falsehood and distinguish it from falsehood from truthhood if we can't hear them speak? Thank you. That, that's a very good question, and that's part of what I really wanted to uh, address here as, as the first big conference that we're organizing, that we're inviting uh, community to you. That's a part of the reason why I'm giving this speech. And the answer to that is, is uh, as, as I was saying, I said reasons to maybe not uh, let people speak or to let them speak, right? The, the answer kind of lies in there, but that's not a complete list. Uh, but but the, the theory of it is important. The, the big idea behind that is that splat, speeches for platforms are, again, are a privilege, and they are, except for this Q&A, it is me promoting something that I believe, whether it's true or not, okay? The discussions between people on, on who should speak and what is what righteous, unrighteous, and at what point does somebody become an enemy of God, these things are reserved for our studies, okay? They're not reserved uh, uh, for, for here. If somebody wants to, let's say a new topic erupts today, okay? And then five people decide they want to give a speech on it. I, I'd say, my personal thing is that's fine. But then 10 years later, we, we decided, like we discerned the issue, we judged it. We went through every Quranic verse back and forth and then people are still promoting uh, the, the wrong side of this issue. What, we dis what, what the community of believers is certainly a wrong side, what is wrong by God, then why let them speak? So the, the, point, the ultimate point is we, we decide as, as, a, as a community who's going to speak or not and we can't, we have to be forthcoming about it. We can't uh, just let like, the, the shadow banning stuff, this like beating around the bush. No, we're going to tell you, and if we're wrong, we'll pay for it, most likely, right? We'll, we'll pay for it. And if we're wrong, come tell us we're wrong, and we'll discuss it. I have never, 
in my life in this in the San Jose community have had a, a, or heard in any topic which was not allowed to be discussed. I have never heard people put down uh, in in a way like where no 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 you're not allowed to speak about this right. This has never ever happened. We 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 discuss every topic every time and we discuss it to death. And that's how we know. Thank you. Um, thank you so much for your speak, Eunice. My, I just had a general comment. It's about all the speeches. Sure. And when it comes to the slides, um, I just wanted to say we have to be very careful that even our slides are, represent the Quran very well. For yours, just the last slide where mm -hmm. it was depicting the angels, I just thought oh, that it yeah. didn't represent the Quran <laughs> because they're in human form and they're all females. So oh, it was, was just male. making me a little <laughs> uncomfortable. It was male. And I did actually. That's in general. And I know uh, Solomon, um, where he had the slide for Trump comparing him to, <laughs> uh, uh, I don't know what it was, fuzzy something. <laughs> Maw. So he took that back. So I just wanted to say. Okay. I'll, I'll yes. rescind the, the previous slide. Yeah, I should. <laughs> it, was actually, it was actually a male angel, though. But, I mean, angels okay. don't have gender, in my opinion.